So PayPal just released a stable coin. They released their own stable coin, PYUSD, through Paxos on the Ethereum network. And I wanna talk about this, I wanna talk about this with you, but I don't want to do what other YouTube channels are doing, giving you the news. I really just wanna talk about this with you, tell you the pros, tell you the cons, so you can have a better understanding of what's going on in cryptocurrency right now. So PayPal releases a stable coin through Paxos, which means there's demand for regulators, there's demand in the market. PayPal wouldn't make this move if there wasn't pre-marketing structure or pre-marketing need for this product. And I'm saying marketing because this is marketing. This is bringing people to the platform, but it's also bringing people into crypto. So this is good for crypto adoption. Don't get me wrong. This is great news. It's bullish news. It's amazing news and will help cryptocurrency in general, not only to bring new users in. It legitimizes cryptocurrency. It leg legitimizes the need for stable coins and regulators are seeing this in a whole different light. And this may or may not have anything to do with BlackRock, but as you saw, as soon as BlackRock wanted to get in with a Bitcoin ETF and possibly later on with an Ethereum ETF, you saw the SEC take a whole different approach, especially with all the, uh, how can I put this, congressional attack and involvement against our boy, Gary Gensler. And what did Gary do? Well, basically, he leaned over for BlackRock. I mean, BlackRock said the word, and he said, hey, well, maybe, you know, AI is more important to regulate right now. Maybe we'll leave cryptocurrency for later on, giving a green light for the ETF and everything else that BlackRock wants to do. So basically, what he did was a strategic sort of surrender. He strategically surrendered by running away. And they released their stablecoin on the Ethereum blockchain. Why Ethereum? Well, proof of concept, the Ethereum foundation, and something I've been talking about for a long time, Ethereum is king when it comes to dApps, when it comes to building, when it comes to platforms, opposed to Bitcoin, where Bitcoin is a store of value, it's a currency, it's sound hard money. Ethereum is for building. Now, this is not to say that PayPal won't build or make accessible other blockchains in the future, but they're starting with Ethereum for a reason, meaning Ethereum right now, or as always, is a great investment, by the way. And this will bring a lot of upside to Ethereum in the long term, in my opinion. But let's get back to PayPal. A few things you may or may not know about PayPal if you're watching other influencers on the subject. And that is that PayPal is programmable money, meaning they can freeze your account, they can stop your transaction, and basically do whatever they want with your stable coins. You have no control other than being able to exchange it through PayPal to other cryptocurrencies that they support. They control your stable coin. Meaning it's not like Bitcoin where you can send to anybody, whoever you want at any time. It's pretty much like XRP or other blockchains or other stable coins, excuse me. And no, I'm not saying that XRP is a stable coin, although it does act like one pretty effectively. What I'm saying is that XRP may be decentralized in certain aspects, but it's centralized in the controllership. Otherwise, it wouldn't be able to fulfill its use case for the banks that they're talking about. But this video is not about XRP. XRP, if you want to know more on that subject, just click the link right here. I'll also leave it at the end of this video. Hey, real quick, the video you are watching right now is sponsored by The Crypto Factor and Paul's Links. So under any video, if you click the description and you click more, you will actually find some amazing links that will give tremendous value to you. You will be able to check out our affiliate links, my books that I've written on cryptocurrency, my online course on how to profit from meme coins and more, a one-on-one -on -one coaching option so you can actually get on a call with me so I can answer your questions and tailor fit things in your situation, as well as being able to become a VIP Factor member today. You will also be able to see free webinars that will give you the advantage in cryptocurrency, will give you the advantage against your competition 
competition so you can make profits as well as be able to see other useful links. And let's not forget, you can actually subscribe to the channel, support your channel, The Crypto Factor, so we can support you. It's win-win. Check out those links. Now, you have to understand that a lot of people and influencers are making a lot of drama and clickbait titles when it comes to PayPal stablecoin being programmable and being able to do all this stuff. I mean, freezing your account, your transaction, and so on. And that is because it, get, it, it gets clicks. I mean, think about it. Most influencers already know, and if they don't, I'd be really worried about them. They already know that USDT and USDC pretty much has the same traits. And when you put something in the code or in the contract or the release that it can do this, it doesn't mean they are. They just need to protect themselves and, and abide by regulation to be able to release the stablecoin. So what does this mean for you? What is the point of this video? Well, it's very simple. PayPal's move into cryptocurrency is huge. It's extremely huge and will bring a lot of adoption and it will bring a lot of credibility to the cryptocurrency space. They're probably also setting themselves up to give a regulated option to institutions to be able to get in and out of cryptocurrency. It's a setup, but it's there for a reason. We also have BlackRock coming in. We have a whole bunch of institutions coming in, but you need to be careful when you buy cryptocurrency on PayPal and when you put it in a stablecoin because it's never completely yours and you don't have full control. What I'm saying, not your keys, not your crypto. If you don't have control of them in your own wallet, they're just not yours. And while more people get into cryptocurrency, it's our responsibility, especially people like me that have YouTube channels, to educate people on this so they can also start using cryptocurrency on their own, become their own bank, and actually reap the benefits of cryptocurrency as it's meant to be made, as it's meant or, or how it's supposed to have been created. Great for adoption, but we need to be careful. We need to understand how it works and we need to know the benefits, the cons, the pros, and educate people on this. And I will be trying to do this as much as possible on this channel. So please share this video, subscribe down below. I would really appreciate it. And make sure you check out this video and this video here next.